to be able to understand what are oracles and how they work. You first need to understand what is a smart contract, so let's do a quick recap. Smart contracts are simply agreements. If you do something for me, I do something for you in return, but here, these agreements are written in code and executed automatically when certain conditions are met. A snacks vending machine is a very simple form of a smart contract, the agreement here is that if you give the machine half a dollar, then it automatically gives you a can of coke. We can make an agreement right now that says if you give me one ethereum, then I will give you 3000 tether tokens. So you go ahead and lock in the ethereum coin in the smart contract, and I lock in my 3000 tether tokens in the same smart contract, and then the agreement will be executed automatically, and you will get the tether tokens, and I will get the Ethereum coin. These smart contracts remove the need for third parties, as these agreements are shared with a lot of computers on the blockchain, so, no one can edit them. This makes these smart contracts very powerful and usable in a lot of fields. We actually have a full detailed video about smart contracts if you want to learn more about them. But for now, one of these use cases is in the sports betting space. For example, we can bet on the results of a sports match. Let's say you bet $100 on Team 1, and I bet $100 on Team 2. We can then write a smart contract that acts as an escrow between us, I lock in my $100, and you lock in your $100, and once the match ends, the smart contract should automatically pay the winner the $200. But the problem here is that the smart contract doesn't actually know which team won the match. In fact, any smart contract doesn't know about anything that happens outside the blockchain it runs on, and that is due to security purposes. So these smart contracts need a way to get reliable trusted real-world data in a secure manner. And that is where oracles come into play to solve this problem. Welcome to Cryptobi, where we explain cryptocurrencies and DeFi topics in the most simple and beginner-friendly way. In this video, you will know what are blockchain oracles, their types, how do these oracles actually work, and finally, we will go over some applications that are currently using these oracles. So grab a snack, and let's get started. Blockchain oracles are simply computers, also called nodes, that gather data from different sources and then send it to a smart contract that needs this data on the blockchain. We will talk about these data sources in a minute, but for now this data can be prices of crypto, stocks or currencies, temperatures, results of sports matches, or even flight delays. So you can think of them like an intermediary that connects smart contracts with the outside world. These oracles can be categorized into a lot of categories, but mainly there are two types of oracles, input oracles and output oracles. Input oracles are oracles that get data from the real world and then send it to a smart contract on a blockchain. Remember the betting example we talked about at the beginning. In this case, we need an input oracle to get the results of the match from a trusted source and then send it to our smart contract, which can then pay the winner according to the result it received. Output oracles on the other hand get data from the blockchain and then send it to a system or a device in the real world, these systems or devices are also called off-chain systems or off-chain devices. This type of oracles can be used in car rental services in the future. For example, after you pay the rent in crypto by sending the rent amount to the address of the car owner, the oracle will get your successful transaction information and send it to the car system, and once it arrives, the car can then be unlocked with your key. This was a general idea, but it is still early for an application like this to be fully developed. Another use for output oracles is connecting blockchain transactions with our current banking systems, for example, a bank may deposit a loan payment into a customer's account once he locks up some of his crypto as a collateral on the blockchain. Let's now get to how oracles actually work. For an oracle node to work, there has to be a smart contract on the blockchain to receive requests for data from other smart contracts, and then send these requests to the oracle node in the real world. This smart contract is called an oracle contract. After the oracle node receives a request for data, it goes and gather the needed data from external data sources. These external data sources most of the time are data providers, which are companies that provide trusted reliable data for a paid subscription. 
For example, sportsdata.io is a data provider that provides results and other data for many sports like soccer, football, golf, and even esports competitions. After the Oracle node gets the needed data from these data providers, it sends it to the Oracle contract on the blockchain, but in a transaction format to be readable and usable on the blockchain. After that, the Oracle contract will then take this data and send it to the smart contract that requested this data at the beginning. As you can see, we here used one Oracle node to get our requested data. This can make a big problem, as this one centralized Oracle node can manipulate or give wrong data to our smart contract if the person operating the node was given money to do so. This smart contract could be controlling millions of dollars and it will act automatically based on this wrong data. This problem is known as the Oracle problem. Let's now see how this problem is solved by Chainlink, which is the most popular Oracle's project right now. In Chainlink, there are many Oracle nodes, not just one. When a smart contract requests data from Chainlink Oracle nodes, let's say the result of a sports match, a new smart contract will be automatically created. This contract is called a Service Level Agreement Contract, or SLA contract for short. This SLA contract will create three new contracts, a reputation contract, an order matching contract, and an aggregation contract. We know that these words may be very confusing to many people, but don't worry, we will explain them very simply. First, we have the reputation contract. This contract checks the performance history of Oracle nodes to see if they provided correct and honest data in the past, and then it will eliminate untrustworthy nodes and make a list of trusted reliable nodes based on their previous performance. Next, we have the order matching contract. After the reputation contract makes its list, the order matching contract sends the data we need to all the Oracle nodes on the list. After the nodes know the data needed by the smart contract, they send their bids. A bid is an amount of link tokens an oracle can lock up as a guarantee that they will not do anything shady or send wrong information. Each node sends its bid to the order matching contract, which will then choose a number of these oracle nodes to complete the job and provide the requested data. After that, the chosen nodes will go and gather the requested data from their external data sources we talked about earlier, and then send the results to the aggregation contract. An aggregation contract is a contract that checks all the received data and eliminate wrong results. If in our example, there were four chosen nodes and three of them sent the same specific result, but the other ones send different results, these wrong results will be eliminated and then the aggregation contract will approve the result sent by the three correct nodes. The aggregation contract can also sometimes take an average of all received results. For example, if the requested data was the price of Tesla stock, and the three nodes sent three different but very close results, the aggregation contract will take an average of the three results and approve it as the correct data. After the aggregation contract gets the correct requested data, it sends it to the smart contract that requested it. You may be wondering, why do these Oracle nodes do all of this? Well, they earn money from providing this data. Any smart contract requests data from Oracle nodes have to pay some link tokens and the aggregation contract pays these tokens to the honest nodes that provided correct data. You should know here that some types of data are simple like crypto prices and a lot of smart contracts need to access this data in a fast and cheap way. So crypto prices are always available on a smart contract on the blockchain. This smart contract is called a data feed contract. Any smart contract that needs prices data will just have to send a message to this smart contract and it will get the requested prices data in the reply to this message in a very fast and cheap way. It should be said here that the data on this feed contract is always updated by multiple Oracle nodes. You should know here that these data feeds are very popular and used by popular DeFi protocols like Aave. Let's now go see how Oracles are currently being used in the insurance field. Flight insurance is an area where oracles are currently being used by big insurance companies like AXA. What happens is that the insurance company locks in a large amount of money in a smart contract. This smart contract can get flight delays data from oracle nodes and when a customer's flight is delayed, the smart contract will automatically send him his insurance money, removing the need to contact the insurance company and wait for a long time to get the situation investigated. This also reduces costs for the insurance companies by eliminating the need to have each case manually investigated and processed. The same thing can happen in crops insurance. 
Farmers all over the world can have insurance for their crops by paying the insurance premium to the insurance company. And when bad weather conditions like rain damage their crops, the smart contract automatically sends them their insurance payment. The oracles in this case will supply weather conditions data to the smart contract, like temperatures and rainfall. Those were some early ideas that use oracles in areas other than DeFi. At the end of this video, we hope you learned what you need to know about oracles and how they work and if you liked our video and want to reward our hard work, give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.